Now, for those who are listening and and are hearing you talk about, for example, the Steve, Steve Irwin and his show and all that, and people are are for the first time listening to this and and realizing, wait, how? So wait. How is that not an educational show? Why was that not an educational show? He was tell, talking to me about the species of animals that he was that was on on the TV. Can you explain to a little bit more about that? Yeah, there's a difference between being part of the environment as we talked about, or somebody comes screaming through the woods, stopping, sure. oh look at this beauty, and dive on it, and that that's not how a real naturalist or conservationist work. Right. We try not to bother. The, the, even the area where these animals live, right? By pouncing, running, screaming, making noises, there is other animals in the in the in the woods that you are startling and scaring when you do these things, because a snake's not going to hear you, sure. but he's going to feel the vibration of over two hundred pound man stomping his feet coming after him. Right. Now, as as Tim Harrison, a person that's been dealing with reptiles his whole, entire career, whose brother is Jim Harrison, who owns the Kentucky Reptile Zoo and Venom Lab. I've been around reptiles my whole life, and I can tell you right now that no reptile sits out in the open, curled up in the middle of a grass field for yeah. a guy with all the camera equipment. It's already there, a three camera man with their lights, and he runs up over the hill and it's still sitting there. Right. That's called refrigeration. Yep. That means because they're ectothermic. So there's, he's actually teaching children how to damage these animals. They put them in a cooler. They dump them out. And I know this from being in Tasmania and uh, Australia when I was over there selling my first book. Yeah. And they loved me over there because I'd imitate Steve. I go, <laughs> you know, back in Ohio, we have a situation with the monarch butterfly. <laughs> it comes down, the mighty monarch will come down with a gigantic wingspan. It's enormous. <laughs> It'll come down, and this mighty wing, it can take the cornea right out of your eye. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. Wait a minute. It's a monarch butterfly, right? Yeah. And it's, and it's a snake. The snake is a rope with a head on the end of it. It's not going to bother you. You stomp your foot, it's going to go away. Right. And that's what I came back on my shows. I come back and I show the snakes how they really act in the wild. You ain't going to get close to them. No. They're going to stay next to rocks. They're going to stay next to trees. They're going to. What he, everything he shows on that show has nothing to do with nature. Has nothing to do with what animals do in the wild. These are setups. These are staged. And even mentioned, if you ever want to read an article, it was an outside magazine that was trying to, they tried to write a positive, I think the guy's name was Randy White. He tried to write a positive article about, he was paid to go over for, by Animal Planet to yeah. do an article on Steve Irwin. Couldn't do it. He looked behind the curtains. He found out what the true stuff was. These animals are being harassed, and it's, it's, it's horrible. And we already knew this. Any sure. reptile guy knows it. Right. If any true reptile man knows no snake's going to lay there. And you're not going to pick a tie pan up by its tail. Right. They're going to hit you 16, 16 times in the face before you put them down. Right. This is not what you teach children. Right. And this is what I want everybody that's listening here. The northern territories of Australia would not show his show. They tried showing it once, and the parents were so upset that really? he's teaching kids to act that way in nature that they would not show his show anymore. So we're talking about the only places that showed over there is from the southern areas, Brisbane, in the you know bigger cities, and that's yeah. it. Those are city folk, just like we have here. Sure. The people who actually live around these animals. Oh heck no, we don't want you jumping on the back of crocodiles. We don't want this stuff. And you do know what a crocodile can do, right? Right. A saltwater croc's not going to let you dive on its back. Okay. Mm, no. And in real life, uh, if a bunch of people jumped on the back of a crocodile, even though it's cooled down, or a zoo croc that they use, it's a staged zoo croc, zoo fed one. They call it zoo fed. Give them a little something to take the edge off, medication wise. Sure. If you jump on the back of them, a bunch of people, a real crocodile will die of stress. They'll get that uh, that uh, um, lactated, uh, um, uh, what they call that, uh, Nick, uh, I can't remember exactly what gets under their arms, like what a shark does, where yeah. you'll see the blood pool up yeah. because they're going into stress. Oh, wow. And they'll, and they'll die. They're going to die of shock. And a true crocodile man will tell you that. You don't, you don't stress you them. You don't, right. A wild animal because they, they will go, they will die on you. Right. So it's what they're showing you there. Is actually the exact opposite of what they're supposed to be showing sure. you. And the exact opposite of what was going on. And you do one more thing. Oprah Winfrey show had Steve O on his show. And I'll send you a little video if I can, I can find it. Yeah. Uh, this definitely. is on another show. Same same alligator. And he had it on his mouth, it was so destroyed. It was so destroyed. They actually put black shoe polish over the scarring, massive scarring tissue on its face. Really? And he was kissing it. 
with Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah Winfrey show years ago. Uh, that's I was on a show called, um, oh, I can't remember what the name of it was right now, but it was a national TV show, uh, but they, uh, uh, The Daily Buzz. It's called The Daily yep. Buzz. And they yep. asked me about that, and I said, what happened was is they, uh, he was kissing the alligator. Yeah. So what happened is all the mothers and fathers went out and bought baby alligators for their kids in the state of Ohio. Hmm. Went out and bought them across the country. So two kids in the Cincinnati and Columbus area got baby alligators, and their mom took pictures of them kissing the alligator like Oprah and, and uh, Stephen Irwin, right? Yeah. One got his lip bit off. The other one got the tip of his nose bit off. So of these mothers are calling the TV show and saying, can you have Tim say something about that? Yeah. So I did, and I got all these paperwork came to Outreach for Animals from Oprah's show saying, be careful what you say, bop, 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 bop. So our attorney, who happened to be a Fraternal Order of Police attorney, he sent back saying, please, put Tim Harrison on the stand, yeah. Oprah Winfrey and Steve Irwin, and let them explain it's okay to kiss an alligator with salmonella and all the other diseases you can get. Have him tell him, and then Tim's going to tell you why it's not good. Right. You guys make that decision. And right. They backed off immediately. That's what happens when you, when people get crazy with this stuff, and people believe it. It's kind of a cult mentality. Right. But Steve-O, he's allowed to do that. He knows what he's doing. Sure. And people imitate it. Monkey see, monkey do. Absolutely. And then if, uh, like you know, like uh, get injured or hurt. Right. Absolutely. So it seems like some a lot of these practices have been going on for a while. It's just that we haven't really been aware of it. I mean, I can rem I can remember like some of the uh, is it I believe is it some of the old those old uh, nature films that they would you know reenact or put a bear and and another animal together so they can you know have it out and or throw off the you know animals off a clip just so they can just you know film it for no reason you know just because they want to see something in action. So it, it seems like in a sense, like this is, this is never really have, has gone away in, in, in the media. It's always been a, a, it's, it's, it's always the main agenda is to sensationalize what's, what's in front of you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the thing is it's man versus nature. Always a Tarzan yeah. mentality, you know, where we, we can do all these things and everything else. You're talking to Marty Stout for wild America. Remember, yeah. he got himself in serious trouble for wiring up rabbits by their leg so they can't run away from the, the, the train cougar running through. Everything was an animal that, you know, that they would, that came from out of a cage so they can film it like it was in the wild. Right. Marty Stauffer, you got Marlon Perkins that uh, pulled off some staging things over the years. You know, it goes all the way back, back you know, to uh, uh, the black and white days. You yeah. Know, bring them back alive, Frank Buck, you yeah. know, where he had to kill the female chimpanzee to save the baby so we can take it back and use it to, you know, use it to educate the Americans. Sure. This is like in the 40s. Right. Kill the mother so you can take the baby to save it? Yeah. And they still say that stuff, don't they, Alex? Oh, we have oh, to take the, the baby away from the mother to, to save the to, baby. We right. still hear the same yeah. garbage we heard back in the 40s. Absolutely. That's not, you're absolutely right. It has not evolved. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping the conservation game does. I know it's knocked the crap out of everybody so far it's seen it. Yeah. I'm hoping it will continue in that pattern for the average American. That's all I care about. Yeah. I know there's always going to be that small percentage of people out there that just off the wall don't yeah. care. I'm looking for those people to just say to themselves, you know, that ain't right. Yeah. That ain't right for what they're doing. That's I, And they can see it themselves that this is con. They're conning me. Yeah. This ain't real. It's true. You know, this, a snake don't act this way. Perfect example with Steve Irwin. I do this at all the colleges. I yeah. have a PowerPoint thing where Steve, Austin Stevens, Snake Master, we can just go down the list. There's like six reptile guys that wrestle everything. Yeah. Well, you know, Jeff Corwin, Jeff, all yeah. of them. Yeah. How many times have you seen snakes striking TV cameras hard as, hard as they can with their faces? That's the most exciting thing they can do. Now, I want everybody right. to realize that's a camera coming at them, and there's guys with lights. It's not the host. Right. The host is nowhere to be found. That's them coming at the cobra like this. Yeah. Well, I, ha I show that footage, and I ask people, I said, anybody ever been to a zoo, an accredited AZA zoo in the United States of America or the world? What's it say at the reptile house? Yeah. Don't tap on the glass. Right. Everybody goes, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Why? Why is that? And they go, I don't know. I said, well, it's because if they strike that flat surface, they have no arms and legs. Yeah. They got heat sensors, the Jacobs and Oregon. They're smacking it as hard as they can with their face. They're going to damage those yeah. and not be able to eat, and they're going to die a hideous death. Yeah. Nobody educates the public on that. So I take a boa constrictor that I had rescued. Mm -hmm. uh, I had got out of a business, 
and I wasn't supposed to be there. He was paying a visit, right? Yeah. So he was in this business. And I had him on my arm, and somebody was filming. I said, I'm just going to film it so I don't have to do it for real all the time. Right. I put my finger up in front of the boa constrictor so he's tasting it. The reason I do that, because all these reptile experts were saying I was startling the snake by tapping it with my finger. Okay. I want him to know there's a, something out there, okay? Yeah. He's tasting it. There's something in front of him. I take that finger, and we shoot it from two different sides, and I tap that heat sensor. That's all I do, tap it. His head violently goes back because it hurts. Yeah. And I said, you know, if you do that to a chimpanzee, take a chimpanzee and slam his face into a TV camera, oh, no. he'd be screaming his brains out, and people would turn the TV off, and yeah. he'd be placed under arrest. You do it yeah. to a snake, he can't say ow. Right. So I said, that snake... Is, is in severe pain when you tap that area. It's very sensitive. And I always tell him, I said, here, let me show you. And I showed a, a cobra with Steve Irwin. Yeah. And he's like dancing around, Tim dancing around. He's not even near the snake. Right. And the snake strikes the TV camera three times. Bam, bam, bam. His face is mush. <sighs> it's mush. I pull back, I freeze frame on the, on the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. His face is mush. I was in Clemson College. It was one of, one of the times I just throw it out because Clemson just, it just, hit everybody there like a rock yeah they're like their eyes were big and i and they have tears in their eyes for a cobra i said what do you think is going to happen to this snake ladies and gentlemen he has no face it's mush yeah and he's going to die a hideous death and people have tears in their eyes and one of the professors even told me she goes i don't even like snakes right she goes but it made me made me tear up right that's the education we've had all the way up to now that's great you know yeah striking at tv cameras attacking us like Steve-O, he has to upset a crocodile so much till it charges him. Right. And then when people see me on my films, I go get the cobra or go get something like that. It's calm. I don't hope it doesn't ever puff up. Sure. I want to calmly move it. I want to gently move it yeah. so we don't stress it out and I don't get bit. Right. Absolutely. And now, 47 years and probably more than that, because I'm counting it 16 years mm -hmm. on working for the zoo vet. I, before that, I was a kid catching snakes and stuff when I was young. I've never been bit by a venomous snake, and I've handled thousands because I actually respect the crap out of them. And as you say, I got compassion for them. Right. I don't right. want to stress them. Right. I don't want to get, right. get them to the point where they get angry like all those TV shows do and right. attack the TV host. Ooh, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. you have to remember that these these people that are producing these shows are not necessarily animal lovers. They're out there to <laughs> for ratings. They're out there right. to see what action they can get on camera so they can, you know, sensationalize that moment, even though it was probably, you know, probably not as exciting as you might have think. But once you you cut it into, uh, you know, a couple clips here and there and you add some music, you know, it, it gives you that, oh, wow, that, you know, oh, my goodness, I can't believe that actually happened. But, you know, you were probably there. It was probably nothing. It probably took a two, two seconds and it was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But because yeah, it wasn't so exciting, we have to sensationalize it, or at least the the, right. the the producers have to sensationalize it, and that's one that's yeah, and and that's one that's one thing that 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 my brother and I Sam that I mean we hate shows that are like that, obviously you know because it's not real. They call it reality TV, but it's not really reality TV. It's all produced. It's all it's all scripted. Everybody's got their lines, just like a regular drama or a comedy series. There's nothing no no other different. The the what what I don't like about it is that they're trying to tell you that it is real and it's actually really not. So right. what we do is, I mean, obviously one of the things that we do when we go, we're out, you know, filming and documenting, we we try not to uh, to get involved. You know, we're we're there, we're we're behind the cameras, and what happens happens, and that is it. We don't go out and be like, hey Tim, can you go go ahead and reenact that and jump back in there in that water and let's take your shirt off and. Let's make yeah. it all sexy so that the camera can see it and do this, this, and that, and we can get better ratings. No, that's there's no education in that, you know, you know. So that's that's one thing that we do definitely work on is to complete just educate the public. This is what's going on. This is this this is this has been going on for years, and now it's time to let you know to shine a light on it. So, because there's not a lot of shows out there. If you, you know, I can both right. probably agree, we can go to just about every single cable network and name me one educational channel other than maybe whatever BB shows, you know, that we're watching as far as, you know, Planet Earth and stuff like that, where they're actually say, that's it. educating you about the killer whale or 
whatever species out in the wild. You know, that's pretty much it. But sure. imagine if, but you know, but people don't realize, obviously those, because they are real, you know, they take years to create because they're not actually going out there taking a, a, a snake out of a, out of a cooler and putting it in there so that they can capture it. I mean, these guys are spending months and months and even up to a year or two years out there just to capture 30 seconds of a tiger out in Russia. So imagine if we would have a lot of these more stories, like more of the captivity stories here in the U.S. that we could be putting out in the air uh, on network television, but not but real stories, not, not, you know, sensationalism stories, you know. But the problem with that is that these networks, it's, it's not sexy. It's not sexy. It doesn't doesn't sell. But, you know, I don't know. I think people are changing the way they think. I think people are kind of craving these kind of uh, uh, documentaries that are waking you up, you know, like the Blackfish, the Sea Spiracy, the, you know, Cowspiracy, all these different type of uh, uh, of documentaries, uh, Elephant in the Room, of course, and, and now with the Conservation Room, I mean, uh, the Conservation Game. That I mean, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, it's it's not out yet. I'm sure eventually will it'll be out for streaming. But it is an amazing documentary. I mean, it will wake you up. It will at the same time you'll see some of those people that you followed for many years and be like, "What? They're doing that?" And 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 you don't realize it because you would it's the people you would never really think, but. It's definitely an eye-opening film.